Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here uh, at the studios of um, SSC Live TV here at St. Stephen Baptist Church with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the Master on a daily basis. Thank you for joining us today. Yesterday we began a series on one of the great personalities of the Bible. His name is Caleb. And uh, we're recognizing Caleb because Caleb has a can-do attitude. Now, yesterday we talked about how God wanted the children of Israel to enter into the Promised Land, but ten men who had spied out the land said, we cannot do it because they're giants in the land. And Caleb, along with his colleague Joshua, were the only two, the minority, who gave a report that said, we can do it. And because the ten uh, poisoned the thinking of the, of, the, of the nation, the nation voted not to do it. And God became so angry that God said, you will not go in. I'm going to cause you to wander in the desert uh, for 40 years. And it was a tragedy. It was a tragedy. Let me tell you what a tragedy is. When we think of a tragedy, we think of something bad happening to someone. And that is something that's tragic. But many of us are living tragic lives, not because something bad is happening to us, but we're living tragic lives because something good should be and could be happening, but it's not. And the reason it's not happening is because of our attitude. God's not concerned about our ability. Ability asks the question, can I? Attitude asks the, the question, will I? And, and Caleb was saying, I can't overcome the giants in the promised land by myself. But God can because God is with me. And because God is with me, I can. The poet said, I can't, God. You never said I could. You can, God. You always said you would. What a tragedy. God had positioned them for victory. God had protected them for victory for 18 months. God had protected them in the wilderness. Positioned them, protected them, and more importantly, God had promised them victory but they did not do it. Look, if you will, at Numbers chapter 13, and we're going to read verses 30 through 33. Numbers chapter 13. Notice what it says. Now, this is after the 10 spies had told all of this report to the nation about how the giants were filling the land, and they even, they even went further than that. They said that the, the earth opens up and swallows people alive. So they were making all kinds of, of, um, of, of bogus statements uh, to intimidate and frighten the people. So the Bible says, Caleb silenced the people who were complaining against Moses and said, we should attack now and take the land. We are strong enough to conquer it. We can do it. That's the we can spirit. But the men who had gone with Caleb said, no, we are not strong enough to attack them. The people are more powerful than we are. So they spread false reports among the Israels, Israelites about the land they had explored. They said the land doesn't even produce enough to feed the people who live there. Everyone, don't forget that, that everyone we saw was very tall. Everyone we saw was very tall. And we even saw giants there and the descendants of Anak, and we felt as small as grasshoppers and that is how we must have looked to them. That's how we must have looked to them. This is what we call the grasshopper complex. They have the grasshopper complex. And, and the grasshopper complex, uh, many people have it. It's uh, when you have, such a, you have a negative appraisal of yourself in the presence of facts. I mean, the facts say that God is with you. But in spite of the facts, you still have a negative appraisal of yourself. Uh, the, the grasshopper complex is when you uh, feel inferior in the presence of others. So they felt like they were grasshoppers in the presence of these giants. Uh, and they said everyone was a giant. And so they had this grasshopper complex. Now, if they were if they were 
If they were certain that there were no giants over there, they would have said, okay, let's go into the land. If there was no giants and just small people, they would have gone into and said, let's take it, which is a sign that you have the grasshopper complex, and that is you only attempt the things that you know that you can succeed in. And you won't stretch yourself to say, you know what, maybe I'm a giant. Maybe I'm a giant. And maybe instead of focusing on my weaknesses, I maybe should focus in on my strengths. What was the difference between Caleb and the ten spies? Here it is. The, the difference is, is what they focused on. Ten of the spies focused on obstacles, but Caleb and Joshua focused on opportunities. Ten of the spies focused on problems, but, but Caleb and Joshua focused on possibilities. Ten of the spies focused on giants, but ten of the spies focused on grapes. There are some grapes there. Ten of the spies focused on foes, while Caleb and Joshua focused on fruit. Ten of the spies focused on barriers, but Caleb and Joshua focused on blessings. Ten of the spies focused on giants, but Caleb focused on God. And brothers and sisters, if you focus on your giants, you'll stay out of your promise. Now, you'll, you'll abort what God has for you. When you focus on God, you will enter into the promised land, believing that even if the giants is bigger than you, the giants is, are smaller than God. And it's all about attitude. Caleb had an I can attitude. And hear me, especially students, some of you, and, and parents tell this to your students. When they say, I can't because I can't do certain things in school, tell them that I can is more, more powerful than IQ. That's how powerful I can is. I can is more powerful than IQ. Now, as I close this lesson today, remember what they said. Go back to the verse. It says, we even saw giants there, the descendants of Anak. We felt as small as grasshoppers, and that is how we must have looked to them. <laughs> so they felt like the giants looked at the, the children of Israel, these ten spies, and said, look how small they are, as though they interviewed these giants. What's interesting is 40 years later, when they do go into the promised land, listen to what Rahab says about how the people in Canaan, the promised land, felt about the children of Israel. Joshua chapter 2, verses 8 through 11 says this, Before the spies settled, settled down for the night, Rahab went up on the roof and said to them, I know that the Lord has given you this land. Everyone in this country is, ter stop here, is terrified of you. Isn't that something? They, they are terrified of the giants, they got it backwards. The giants are terrified of them, which is to say that the giants saw something in the children of Israel that they didn't see in themselves. And what they saw in the children of Israel was the presence of God. And when God is with you, and you know God is with you, and you affirm that God is with you, then giants back away. I will never forget seeing a nature flick about a cougar, a mountain lion that was chasing a bear. It was a little cub, and the little cub got separated from its parents. And this cougar was chasing this cub, and the cougar, the cougar had cornered the cub on a cliff, and the, cougar, the, the cub had no, no, nowhere to go. And so, the, the, the cub, realizing that it was trapped, uh, the cub realizing it's trapped, decided to do the only thing he could do, and that was to act brave. And so that little cub got up on his hind legs, stuck up its paws, and started roaring, ah, 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 I guess how a cub roars. But anyway, guess what the mountain lion did? The mountain lion ran, ran from a little cub. And the, the, the cub thought, well, may, maybe I am strong. Maybe I am big. But then the cameraman pans behind the cub. And guess what is behind the cub? 
the Cubs grizzly bear daddy. And the grizzly bear daddy had stood up behind the cub. And what the mountain lion saw was not the cub, but the father who was behind the cub. And brothers and sisters, when you are facing giants or facing anything, there's always God behind you roaring for you. And when God is behind you, then the, the, the mountain lions run, the giants run. Quit telling God about your giants and start telling your giants about your God. Overcome the grasshopper complex. Don't you see yourself as a grasshopper? Because God doesn't see you as a grasshopper. And other people don't see you as a grasshopper because people tend to treat you the way you treat yourself. If you feel low about yourself, then people will treat you in a lowly way. So overcome the grasshopper complex through faith that God is behind you to give you the strength you need to overcome your giants. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today. There have been so many times in our life where we've lost confidence in ourselves and we've internalized the grasshopper complex and we look and think everybody's so much bigger than us. But even if they are bigger than us and have more opportunities and resources, I thank you that they're not bigger than you. And that if we put our trust in you, there's no mountains we cannot climb. There's no valleys we cannot cross. There's no sickness we cannot overcome. There's no problem that cannot be solved. There's no promised land that cannot be seized. There's no giants that cannot be defeated. Give us, give us that can-do spirit that you gave to Caleb. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being with me on another powerful point to ponder. And you know what? Um, everybody needs a church home. That is very important. We have a vertical relationship with God, but we need a horizontal relationship with other people. And the wonderful thing about um, uh, this platform that we have, uh, the digital platform, is that you can become a a digital disciple and connect with St. Stephen Baptist Church and be a part of our fellowship. And we'd love to invite you to do that. And if you're interested in just inf information about St. Stephen Church, we'd like to get back with you. Just email us here at St. Stephen Church in Louisville, Kentucky at uh, newstart at ssclive.org. God bless you. Thank you for being with me on another powerful point to ponder. And as we close out, don't forget what we say every day during COVID-19. Don't forget to stay safe, stay sane. If you can, by all means, stay home. God bless you. See you tomorrow.